I want to start this video by reiterating the fact that this is an educational documentary. Its purpose is to educate viewers about incidents of true crime. This video is here to inform people about real incidents in the hope that they can be avoided and to give victims a voice that they have otherwise lost. This is an additional notice that viewer discretion is advised. Viewer discretion is advised for this educational documentary. Welcome or welcome back to Dark Case Documentaries. I bring you true crime, disturbing stories and other things that you may later regret knowing with regular uploads every week. Please do join the quickly growing, incredibly supportive Dark Case family by hitting subscribe now and turning on notifications. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. If your name is on screen right now, then you're a legend. Our love and respect goes out to all those affected by this dark case. Kimberly Hill was born in Oklahoma on March 28, 1963. Her parents were Clyde Hill and Sharon Maples. She had an older sister named Marilyn and a younger brother named David. From 1982 to 1992, Kimberly served in the United States Marine Corps. In 1990, she gave birth to her first child, a daughter named Desiree. After Desiree was born, Kimberly decided not to re-enlist in the military. She instead began working as a hospice caregiver. On December 27, 1995, Kimberly gave birth to her son, Kevin. Kevin's father left Kimberly shortly after their son was born, and therefore he was raised solely by Kimberly. Kevin's former classmates described him as pretty average, saying that some people even found him to be a little bit strange, but they saw it as nothing more than him just being a little awkward. Kevin also got pretty average grades in school, and he never partook in any sports. By the age of 18, he had never had a girlfriend, nor had he kissed a girl. In 2014, Kevin and Kimberly were living in apartment 1707 at the Windrush apartment complex in Corpus Christi, Texas, while daughter and sister Desiree, who was about six years older than Kevin, now lived on her own, but not too far from the family. In March of 2014, Kevin considered ending his own time on this earth. He said that he had had these thoughts for years, but it wasn't until now that he had actually begun to seriously consider it. He claimed that he wasn't depressed. He just felt bored with the mundane life that he was living. Kevin, however, says that he learned to accept these feelings and he never reached out to anyone for help. On the morning of March the 27th, 2014, Kevin finally decided to tell his mother how he was feeling. He said he did this to see how Kimberly would react. She apparently told Kevin that she would be devastated if he opted out of living, but that ultimately he was an adult. He could do whatever he wanted at the end of the day, and there was nothing that she could do to stop him. Kevin said that Kimberly then called Desiree. This was to ask if she could come and pick up Kevin later that day, so that he could stay at her house. Kimberly thought that a change of scenery may clear his head, since Kevin didn't really have many friends, and he spent most of his time stuck inside the apartment playing video games. Additionally, Kevin didn't yet have a driver's license. This was another reason why he didn't leave the house very often unless he was with his mother or his sister. According to Kevin, Kimberly had him stay at his sister Desiree's pretty frequently. However, he said this upset him because he always felt like this meant his mother didn't want to deal with him. Kevin did not like how his mother reacted to this situation at all. He claims that, in that moment, he knew he had to do something about it. He said that it was now or never. At around 9pm that same day, Kimberly was sitting on a couch watching TV. Kevin crept up behind her. He put a cord from his video game controller around his mother's neck. Kevin said that this did not work how he planned. He says his mother was able to remove the cord from her neck and to get away. 
Kimberly began screaming. Kevin chased her into the bedroom. There he pulled out a hammer that Kimberly kept in her nightstand drawer. He used this hammer to strike her around 20 times. According to Kevin, his mother began to make noises. At this time, he thought she was playing dead. So he took this as a cue to continue his attack. He still wasn't convinced that his mother was no longer breathing. So he went to the kitchen to grab a sharp implement. Kevin put this implement into the top of his mother's cranium where an opening had already formed. He then began mixing her brains around in her head. He soon discarded the sharp implement and instead used his bare hands. After this, Kevin removed Kimberly's clothing. He went on to violate her. After the incident, Kevin took a bath. He changed his clothes and then fled the scene. He rode on his bike for a bit before leaving it in a ditch and beginning to run on foot. He claimed he wanted to see how far he could get by simply running, but he didn't make it far before he realised what he had done. He stopped by a nearby wooded area where he sat and began hysterically crying. He said that reality hit him hard. Kevin then went back for his bike and rode it to a nearby house. He knocked on their door and asked to borrow their phone. He said that he needed to call the police and let them know that he had just taken somebody's life. Instead, the homeowners called 911. They informed the operator of what Kevin had just told them. Police arrived shortly after. Kevin was arrested on the spot. When police got to Kimberly's apartment, they found her lying on the floor of her bedroom. There was a hammer found next to her body. Three different notes were found throughout the apartment that Kevin appeared to have written. One said, Chase me, sorry for the mess, KD. Another one, which was directed towards Desiree, said, Keep your head up, hurry, she might still be alive, even though I highly doubt it. Kevin claims he left the notes for Desiree because he thought she would be the one to find the scene. However, this obviously did not end up happening. Kevin said that he left the notes because he was in a playful mood, but when he tried to flee, the guilt ended up getting the best of him. He said this is why he went to the nearest house to confess. In the early morning hours of March the 28th, police sat down to interview Kevin. When police asked Kevin why he did this, he said, I always love my mother, I guess in the wrong sort of way. This is an excerpt from that interview. Start at the beginning, man. What, what caught the focus? Well, the very beginning, I asked my mother for permission to die, or rather kind of com commit suicide, the sort of beating around the bush sort of thing. Because, mm -hmm. well, well, that doesn't really matter why I wanted to kill myself. Sure either. it does. It does. I'm bored with life. I don't like life. Mm -hmm. I don't like people. I don't like living it, basically. There's really nothing, anything depressing about it. It just is what it is. What, what got you to this point? Tell us about what got you to this point. Did you hate life? You wanted to commit suicide. Oh, what did you say about it when you told her you wanted in a round about ready to commit suicide? She said no. She said yes. What uh, did she say to you? She said, um, basically, I'm a grown man, and what I do, I she can't really stop me. She was, and no, she was distraught over the course, I mean. She, of course, of course. Yeah, she said she'd cope with it, I mean, if you kill him, that's kind of why she wanted me to go away, why she called my sister to come pick me up, and that's kind of why I just left. So she, at that point, you got pissed? Not necessarily, I just knew it was time to act now, now or never. Did you ever tell anybody else what your plans were? Uh, that, you know, what you wanted to do your mom or your sister? No, but over the years, there were hints. As a younger boy, I was a, a lot dumber, a lot more angsty, you know. I said things, but I guess they basically brushed it off. I guess the hints were everywhere, but hey, they're my family. Family looks past that kind of stuff, or they try to not look at it, mm -hmm. I guess. I tried to strangle her with a cord, mm -hmm. a ripped cord from a video game console controller. That didn't work, huh? What was this? Uh, you thought strangle her? She was sitting on the couch watching okay. TV. Okay. That didn't work out too well. She started screaming, and so I went to her room, mm -hmm. opened a drawer at the very bottom to the right. 
I pulled out a hammer, I went back in the living room, and well, you kind of get the gist from there. And, uh, she was out pretty quickly, kind of tried to play dead at first, but then I finished it. So you hit her with a hammer when she was sitting on the sofa in the living room? No. First, I tried to strangle her, and uh -huh. that didn't work. Right. I grabbed the cord, so yeah. I raced back into her room, mm -hmm. grabbed the hammer, came back out, and then did it. Okay. How many times? How many times did you hit with a hammer in the living room? At least 20. But then she was still alive. I dragged her into the room, as you probably clearly saw, and then I picked, uh, kind of warmed my hands into her brains to kind of just, just cut it. Mm -hmm. She was still snoring. Okay. So she was still alive? She was still alive. And you went in there and you kind of grabbed those brains? Yeah. Finished it. I actually had to drag her by her clothes to get her in there. It was very laborious, actually. Mm -hmm. She was a pretty big wheel bunch of heavy. Yeah. Uh, uh, explain to her how, how you grabbed her so that you wouldn't leave such a mess in, in the carpet. That... Did you carry her from underneath the arms and just dragged her, or how did you drag her? It was very sloppy, actually. Yeah. I kind of just winged it. I dragged her from her shirt. I dragged her by her legs. I dragged her by any way I kind of fell. I mean, okay. Okay. I don't really exert physical labor, too, mm -hmm. so I'm not a very strong person. She's bigger than you are. Yeah. yeah. She's sort of a little bigger than you uh, you, you mentioned that you lost your virginity to a corpse. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What happened? Oh, well, just last night, my mother, yeah. Okay, you, not somebody else. You talked yeah. about your mom. Yes. Okay, so before that you had never had sex. Well, uh, I guess since I'm being yeah. quiet about it, I might as well tell you now. I yeah, and it's on the note, too, the P.S. part. Uh, we used to have a gray cat named um, Claire. Oh, yeah, bestiality is a thing of mine, too, mm -hmm. now, now you know. And so I um, I strangled it, I drowned it, and then I cut it open, and you know the rest. Mm -hmm. You kind of get the rest. You had sex with the cat, with the dead cat? Cool. Yeah, ripped it open, stuck it in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. you, you ever had sex with a live person? No. No. So that your thing, uh, uh, having sex with a live person that doesn't turn you on, it's a uh, dead, dead thing, dead person, dead an animals, that's what turns you on? I don't necessarily mind. I don't have standards or morals. Mm -hmm. Body's a body and in the end, it's a piece of meat. I guess it's harsh to say, but... Mm -hmm. But no, I don't necessarily mind. I tell you what, give me your fancy of killing a woman. Oh, your fancy killing would be your ace killing. What could that be? This is a little peculiar. I'm on the camera. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm not surprised at what I'm going to hear, but uh, you tell me. Maybe dressing up in a nice suit, sneaking into her house, disabling her boyfriend. You know, yeah, I'd, I'd bring a pretty dress with me to dress her up in. I I was always into strangling, but after after that last um, blunder, I guess maybe something big and sharp would be more along uh, be more along my thing. Mm -hmm. Then I could I don't know probably decapitate her, as I I prefer my women dead. Um, okay. I'd dress her up, I'd stitch her up, kind of just kind of try to work the head back on perhaps. And oh, then I'd go to town, and it would be a night to remember. Mm -hmm. And then I'd kind of just burn everything and run for the hills. Was it a, a fantasy of yours to kill her as well? It and was. Did you write down that on, on your note? Oh, I did, actually, but I decided against it because, well, I had my fill of killing. I didn't seem a little much, mm -hmm. a little too excessive, yeah. Where was this at? Where did you end up at? Ultimately, I ended up in the backwoods of a ditch. Here in town or out of town? Um, Robstown. In Robstown. How did you get over there? In Corpus Christi, I biked halfway, and then I got to the train tracks, and then I ditched the bike in the thick woods, and then from the train tracks, I just walked. To Robstown? Yeah. Okay, and then you w came up to the... Was it like the first house that you saw, or how did you... Oh, how did you go to this house for to ask 
to use the phone. Initially, my plan was just to run, run, run as far as I can, but then I ended up crying my eyes out in like the thick woods, like, oh, uh, what did I do? And I realized, oh, you don't know what you lost till you've already lost it. And so I just, I knew that my life wasn't going to go anywhere, not anymore, so I just kind of gave it up midway. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel sorry you did this to your mom? In a way, yes, but I wouldn't take <coughs> back what I did. It's strange, really. Mm -hmm. I did love her, in a way. Uh, Has uh, she been mean to me? Oh, me? no, no, she's been the best mother. Okay, so she is nothing that she did? To oh, absolutely nothing, no. She if I was to ask you, what did she do to deserve this? What would you answer? Absolutely nothing. I'm just, I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible cruel, person. disgusting person. Yeah, basically. At this point, what do you consider yourself? You consider yourself, I'm going to use a dirty word, okay, but I, I, don't, mean oh. to, I don't mean to insult you, no okay? Way. Do you consider you mentally disturbed? Do you consider yourself crazy? Do you, what, do you consider yourself any of those? No. Or do you think you're okay? You just got some bad thoughts? I'm not mentally disturbed. Disturbed. I mean, I'm saying I know exactly what I did. I know that it's wrong in the, tradi in the traditional no. sense of wrong. Well, it was just a fantasy you had, and yeah. you had to carry it out. Carry it out. Yeah. Not yet. Now I feel vaguely uh, right. Right. kind of like I'm done. Mm -hmm. You still feel like they, well, you're done with your mom. You still feel like you want to keep on killing to keep on, you know, with other fantasies. Or, or how do you feel? I came here to pay for my crime, so I guess I should continue with the truth. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, yes, definitely. I would kill again. Mm -hmm. but, but like I said, I, I admire you for your honesty. You were honest with us, and, and you didn't try to push us. Okay, and, and, and you're like a man. You came out here and, and took it like a man. How do you do in schoolwork, man? Going back to school, how do you do in schoolwork? Pretty mediocre. I never really, I never really could muster. But didn't even really care. I mean, I guess I excelled in English for all that was worth. Okay. Kevin told the police that his mum had done nothing to deserve this and that he had no justification for his actions. In fact, he said that Kimberly was the best mother he could ever have asked for, and he did not realise what he had until it was gone. Kevin told the police he originally planned to end his mother, then get on his bike, ride to his sister's house, and end her as well. He said it was his fantasy to kill both of them, but after ending his mother, he had gotten his fill and decided against it. During his interview, Kevin told police that he had a fascination with murder. He said he had been planning this for a while. He claimed it was just a matter of when he would actually do it. He claimed that their conversation earlier that day was what set his plan in motion. Kevin admitted that he did not believe he was insane. He claimed that, while he was committing the crime, he did understand that what he was doing was wrong. However, he told authorities that, if he was released, he would 100% kill again. He even went so far as to tell them how he would execute his perfect murder. According to Kevin, his perfect murder would involve him wearing a tuxedo and he would bring a dress for his female victim. He would go to the woman's house, break in through the back window, and then carry out the terrible act. He claimed he would use a sharp implement. He would then remove the head before sewing it back on. After this, he would intimately violate the body. He would then set the house on fire and flee the scene. Kevin was arrested and charged with one count of non-capital murder. After just one hour of deliberation, the jury found him guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 2044. Do you think the punishment fits the crime here? What do you think could be done to avoid something like this happening again in the future? Please do let me know down in the comments. If you appreciate what I'm doing here, please do hit that like button. Be careful out there and I'll see you soon.